In this video, we're gonna have a brief discussion about the brand new C8 Corvette ZR1X, the all-wheel drive variant of the ZR1. It takes the E-axle from the E-Ray and combines all of the technology that they've developed over the course of this generation, giving you pretty much the fastest Corvette ever made. And because of the E-axle in the front, you're going to be tearing it up in a straight line. We're gonna have the opportunity to talk to one of the engineers here, but because this car is still under development, it's, it's not completely done yet. Software, hardware revisions are yet to come. So we're gonna learn a little bit about it before we finally take this out for a drive. But this is going to be a very expensive car for the very limited few that can afford the pinnacle of Corvette technology. So let's get started. We're here at the launch or the unveiling of the Corvette ZR1X. I'm here with Keith Badgley. And if you watched our channel long enough, you'll recognize him from our original E-Ray video that we shot in Michigan with you. He was kind enough to join us for the NSX Type S and E-Ray comparison at Audubon Country Club. Can you briefly walk through what your role is at the company and what you do? Yes, I'm the lead development engineer for the ZR1X. Uh, we developed the vehicle at the Milford Proving Ground, and we have a full vehicle technical specifications with a team that supports to bring this vehicle to a new level. And so I'm really happy to be here today to announce GM's and America's hypercar. So from uh, let's talk about some of the high-level acceleration horsepower stats. So it's the LT7 with an e-motor in the front. What does that make in total output now? Yeah, so we're actually really proud because I know a lot of people have done the math, and if you take the 1064 and when, what you have in the E-Ray with 160 horsepower, you'd come to a different number. We actually pushed 26 more horsepower out of the front axle, and that gets a combined total of 1,250 horsepower. So quarter mile faster than the zero one. Sure, yes. And a zero to 60 ton of what? It's gonna be less than two seconds. We're still in development, so we're not ready to announce a quarter mile time yet, or the exact zero to 60 time, but I can assure you we have already achieved less than two seconds. And the same top speed, 233 miles an hour. 233 miles an hour, yes. And the low drag configuration. Right, in the high drag configuration, it's a little bit lower than that in, in both the ZR1 and the ZR1X. Yes, but we have 233 miles an hour in the low drag configuration. Before we talk about the electric motor strategy and the controls and of course the LT7, I quickly want to walk you through, or have you walk me through chassis. Mm -hmm. So it's a wide body Corvette very clearly, and it has two different chassis packages, right? You have a track package and a, and a street package. Yeah, so the street package will have your PS4S tire. It's going to have the low arrow. You can option the high arrow if uh, you, you do plan to take that to the track, or you just want to have the big, the win. big winning to... <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's an appearance package, of, or it, it has a, a presence on the road, let's say. So we understand that that's a choice the customers may make, but that, that package will have a little bit um, softer over the road feel, whereas we have a stiffer suspension in the, the ZTK package, which gives you the big wing, it gives you the Cup 2R tires, which are super capable on the track. I mean, you can almost do no wrong in an all-wheel drive with Cup 2R tires. And so the ride frequency spread, just like ZR1 between ZTK? Yeah, very similar. It's like 10 or 12 percent? Yeah, the, the delta between the two, uh, very similar. So yeah, we, we have that as part of the ZR1X and ZR1 family of, you know, both options. So when it comes to braking, that's the big thing that I immediately notice when I look at these. In the 2025 ZR1s, you're running a carbon ceramic Brembo brake package. Yeah. What are you running now? So this is really exciting too. Uh, as I mentioned, you're gonna get up to really, really quick and high speeds. Um, so to put this in context, I'll tell this first, but the on our initial drag strip testing, we saw that we were seeing speeds that exceeded our 150 mile per hour disconnect from the front axle. So you can imagine the trap speeds that we have to slow from. So we had to go back and calculate the amount of deceleration targets, go look at the friction uh, surface area that was required, and we developed the first ever 10 piston Alcon brakes. We use uh, ST rotors that are continuously woven, woven carbon fiber, and that is amazing thermal capacity. These things are 16 and a half inches, which means <laughs> that we have the thermal capability similar to cast iron. These things are indestructible and they stop on a dime. So they have longer, I guess, service life theoretically versus the outgoing long strand Brembo carbon ceramic rotors, correct? And it's all about thermal capability. So, you know, we're getting to higher speeds and, you know, you've got a lot more energy to dissipate. So uh, it gets into, you know, depending on use cases and things, but we are seeing that these things, uh, again, incredible stopping performance and 
absolutely incredible service life. The reason I bring that up is I know in 26, the ZTK package for regular ZR1 is now getting these Correct. They're being retrofitted to the ZR1. Uh, what we like to do in the Corvette family is, you know, we innovate with the Pinnacle and then we share. And so when we saw how great these brakes were that we developed for this car, we saw, hey, they would fit on the ZR1 and customers are going to want this on their ZTK car. So we brought this developed package and we put it in as an option in Model Year 26 for ZR1 to, to take this, uh, what we're calling the J59 brakes. That's our RPO code for them. So chassis tuning, little different, obviously all wheel drive versus rear wheel drive in the CR1. You have the same 275 front, yes. same 345 rear. When you go with the ZTK package, same amount of downforce, you said 1200 pounds, 1200 pounds. at, at yeah. top speed, <laughs> yeah. which is a lot. <laughs> but the, the real story with the X variant of this is the E all wheel drive. Yes. So same battery pack, the 1.9 kilowatt hour total pack, the mm -hmm. pouch style in the center tunnel, but you've made some pretty big software and control changes, correct? Yeah, so we knew we needed to unlock more performance out of this car. And so in order to do that, we had a couple targets. Number one, continuous lapping uh, in certain modes. So we needed pack energy to do that. And we also wanted to unlock the additional power. So we expanded the usable energy of the pack by 26%, which, allows you, again, to those targets, it allows you that extra horsepower, the 26 horsepower that gets us to the 1250, but it also uh, gets us into some track modes where, again, we can provide consistency for a track capable car such as this. Chemistry has to change those. Software and controls logic. Exactly, software and controls logic. How about the electric motor? Before we walk through how that's deployed, is that physically the same unit? And just because the extra power through the pack that you're being able to, to pull, no, so we took the torque from 125 foot-pounds up to 145 foot-pounds. And in order for the box uh, to be capable of that additional torque, we had to upgrade the bearings and the structure to do this. So this is unique to ZR1X. Can you walk me through the strategy of how the E-all wheel drive is implemented? Is it similar to E-Ray in the basic philosophy of you have the dynamics of a rear drive car corner entry, so you don't have the initial understeer, and then you have the power out to sort of stabilize the car? Is it for, I know we talked to Srab in a past video. Same guy, yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. So actually, you're right. The same guy, and he helped us re-architect the torque architecture, but not because we had different goals. Ultimate traction through the corner is the goal. You want to come in, you want to capture the energy, and you want to take advantage of that, the immediate torque that you get on the front axle when we uh, when we get regen braking, put the energy in the pack. And so that's your goal coming into the corner. But when you're in the corner, your goal is now maximum capability for lateral Gs. So we pull that away. And as you're exiting the corner, we want to dial it in for clawing out. Because you were saying the car can pull one lateral G and one ex forward G at the same time. Yes, coming out of that corner, can you imagine that? And that is what changes your life. I'm telling you, that is amazing. <laughs> You can do 1.3 1 Gs and we'll pull that through first and second gear and almost through third gear. You'll have over a G of acceleration through third gear. So this thing puts you back and you, it sits you back in the seat and gets you a smile on your face whether you want to or not. But I trust you'll want to. <laughs> <laughs> so the, you've, you've upped the speed where the electric motor still the works essentially. And it's now up to 160 mile, yep. miles an hour till you pull the clutch away versus 150 in the E-Ray. That's right. Um, so you're using the E-Motor to pull you out of Honestly, very high speed corners, low speed corners, mid speed corners, and off the line. But at past 160, it's all the LT7 behind you, correct? That's right. After 160, we will disconnect the front uh, and it's 1064 horsepower. So I guess you're stuck with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, does the power linearly fall off from the e-motor the faster you go? Traditionally, electric motors mm -hmm. do better at low speeds than they do at high. Is that power curve? I think what you're thinking is, is yeah, fundamentally, we look, we look at the torque curves. Fundamentally, we look at the torque curves. And so they're very flat at the beginning um, until you reach a speed at which you become power limited. And then you'll, you'll see uh, you know, an exponential curve down. So uh, obviously, this obeys those physics, and you'll have um, that power curve. Understood. Um, when it comes to the way the actual battery though is implemented, having had some time in an E-Ray, depending on your track, who you're dri who's driving the car, in qualifying mode, you have a couple or a handful of laps till it reaches a zero state of charge. That's something the driver has to choose to manage. How has it changed for ZR1X? Yeah, so, well, again, you know, uh, getting learning from the E-Ray, our first opportunity to integrate the e wheel drive technology, uh, we were able to see that there's different drivers and different tracks and different ways this vehicle can be used. So uh, we 
we've got the endurance mode where you go into charge plus and we'll meter so that you get consistent lapping the whole time. But if you're in quality, we also meter in the low SOC region so that we, if you're uh, on an extended long lap or this quality, you know, is a particularly long, it'll get you to the finish line. But we also added a push to pass, which basically overrides that. So while your foot's down all the way and you just simply tap a button on the wheel, you'll go into unmetered. And if you see that finish line or you just see somebody you need to pass, you can go right from a metered strategy to an unmetered and get there fast as possible. But the cooling solution for the pack with a little additional radiator in the front is the same, correct? For the electric uh, motor? And yeah, the, the cooling, uh, there's no additional constraints in the cooling. That was one of the things we also learned when we did um, the E-Ray and studied on the track is that this was very capable. Even in the hottest environments, we were never getting these things too hot. And so we saw that uh, this, you know, the way that we're using this, even with the additional power, we're still highly capable with the existing cooling strategy. No need to add any more mass. Is there anything else? I know we haven't uh, driven the car, it's still in development, but is there anything else you want to add as far as talking through the ZR1X? I just want to say, you know, we talk about developing these cars on the racetrack and, you know, it is fundamentally true. So many hardware decisions, software decisions, controls decisions get made on the track. And when we check in with our senior leadership, they come to the racetrack as well. As an example, uh, proudest moment for me on this car was when Mark Royce came and drove this vehicle at Nürburgring. He was going off, did his lap, came in uh, to the paddock and I was eager to get a status from him. He was sitting there staring forward with his helmet on, tap on the window, how did it go? He flips the uh, front of the helmet, turns to me, revealing the joy on his face and simply says, Keith, this car will change your life. And I agree.